It's that time of the month again. New gotchas rise and new gotchas fall. Some might surprise you, some might not. Hey, my name is Stix and welcome back to another monthly recap of how your favorite gotchas are doing on a month by month basis. These stats in specific are purely mobile and do not include PC stats for reference. If you're interested in gotcha releasing this month, new gotcha to try out, I have a dedicated video exclusively for that that you can find linked below or at the end of this video. Before we jump in, I thought I'd take a moment here to thank all of our incredible patrons over on Patreon. Your continued support is beyond appreciated. Also, if you have a moment, consider following me over on Twitch. I stream there every weekend. Last month, Uma Musume dethroned Genshin Impact as the number one gacha game in the entire world. This month, Genshin Impact took back its crown with a worldwide revenue of $95 million and 3.8 million new players. Soon there will be more players playing Genshin Impact than there are people in the world. This is up from last month's $90 million. At number 2, we have Honkai Star Rail. Shocker, I know. Now, I will admit right out of the gate here, Star Rail would easily be the number one highest grossing most downloaded gacha game in the world for the month if it didn't only have a week's worth of earnings to base this off of. But in a short six day period, Honkai Star Rail averaged $42 million in revenue and over 30 million players. Again, this is for mobile only and completely disregards PC. Hoyo have now successfully dominated the genre with two of the most popular gacha games in the world. Number 3 is once again occupied by Fate Grand Order, which has pretty much secured itself the number 3 spot every month for the entirety of 2023 thus far, with $35 million in revenue and 200,000 new downloads. This is up quite significantly from last month's $25 million. Nige takes the number 4 spot, something haters would have told you was impossible 6 months ago, earning $25 million and 300,000 new players. Absolutely crazy numbers, although down significantly from last month's $30 million. Uma Musume has secured the number 5 spot, down from the number 1 spot last month, with $25 million in earnings and 60,000 new players. Those are still absolutely insane numbers, given this game still remains pretty much a Japan exclusive. Blue Archive has taken the number 6 spot, maintaining a top 10 spot every month since this year began, with $13 million in revenue and 200,000 new players. This is down slightly from last month's $14 million, but by no means a sign of decline. Number 7 somehow goes to Raid Shadow Legends with a whopping $16 million in revenue and 700,000 new players. This is down from last month's $18 million, uh, and admittedly I, I don't know how this continues to make it into the top 10. I played roughly 15 hours of it, and I found it to be the least free to play friendly gacha that I'd ever played. The number 8 spot goes to Summoner's War with $14 million in revenue and 260,000 new players. This is on par with last month's $14 million, surprisingly not boosted by the recent release of Summoner's War Chronicles which didn't even make the top 10 this month. Coming in at number 9 is Arknights, finally breaking back into the top 10, just barely, with $11 million in revenue and 200,000 new players. This is slightly down from last month's $12 million. Arknights is my favorite gacha game and I'm glad to see that it has made its way back into the top 10. This light makes top 10 here for the first time in, well forever I think, with 11 million dollars in revenue and 1.2 million new players. This is up significantly from last month's 2 million dollars. These are absolutely phenomenal numbers showing that the game has reached a second wind or a massive event that has been marketed to millions of people in a short time frame. Number 11 is taken by Diablo Immortal with $11 million in revenue and 400,000 new players. This is on par with last month's $11 million and goes to show that the game has achieved a very stable income and rate of new player acquisition. Somehow. 
At number 12, we see Project Sekai, with $11 million in revenue and 200,000 new players. This is down quite a bit from last month's $15 million, but still crazy numbers given there isn't a single person that I know that actually plays this game. Heaven Burns Red comes in at number 13, a Japanese exclusive somehow managing to earn $9 million and 100,000 new players, which is down by over half from last month's $20 million. Nevertheless, absolutely crazy numbers as well for a single region release. Marvel Snap, another gacha that I've never heard anyone play, takes the number 14 spot with $9 million in revenue and 800,000 new players. Mostly kids, probably. This is down from last month's $10 million. Number 15 is secured by AFK Arena, a title I guarantee none of you ever saw coming, with $9 million in revenue and 400,000 new players. This is up from last month's $7 million. Can you believe an AFK gacha game brings in more money than Honkai Impact, 3rd, and Tower Fantasy combined? Summoner's War Chronicles managed number 16 with $7 million in revenue and 900,000 new players. Unbelievably high rate of new players comparatively to the earnings, which are down from last month's $8.2 million. Dragon Tail Hunter World, a gotcha that I've never actually even heard of, took the number 17 spot with $6.4 million in revenue and 400,000 new players. This is down from last month's $8 million. Evidently, the game is incredibly popular. I just, I don't know, I, I somehow never knew of its existence. Memento Mori comes in at number eight and is arguably a gotcha that nobody ever expected to have the lasting power that it has, with $6.4 million in revenue and 70,000 new players, down from last month's $8 million, but still higher than almost every other popular gotcha game, somehow. Fire Emblem Heroes takes the number 19 spot with $5.6 million and 20,000 new players only. This is out from last month's $5 million and proof that the Fire Emblem franchise can thrive in any genre. And finally, at number 20 we have Street Fighter Duel with $5.5 million in revenue and 510,000 new players. This is down from last month's $11 million but given the state the game and the company is in right now. It is not unexpected. On the contrary, I'm surprised it still makes so much money. This was admittedly quite the interesting month. Honkai Star Rail launched and has arguably already made hundreds of millions of dollars across every platform combined, dethroning Genshin Impact and becoming the fastest growing gacha game in history. I'm curious of the effect that it will have on Honkai Impact next month, honestly. We saw Tower of Fantasy not even make the top 20, being bested by idle RPGs that don't even require playing, continuing its trajectory into obscurity one month at a time. Punishing Grey Raven barely made $2 million, but with this PC release on May 15th, we may see a significant boost next month, which I'm hoping for given the fact that I absolutely adore Punishing Grey Raven. Other releases like Higan Arathal made a mere $1.8 million in its launch month. Acocalypse and Demian Saga both made less than a million dollars respectively. Admittedly, there has been a decent shift in the genre in the last month and I'm glad to see it. Competition is always important. Now, if none of these games look like games that you'd be interested in playing, then that kind of sucks for you because these are the most popular gacha games right now. But I got you covered with two different video alternatives on screen right now that you should check out instead. One featuring an incredible looking new gacha releasing this year and the other a list of every gacha game launching this month.